with Dallas Summer Musicals. I'm Jory Jackson. We are so excited to have our special guest Stormy Demerson here with us today. Stormy, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm glad I'm, to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Um, we're going to jump right on in. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, your artistry and everything. Okay. I am a multidisciplinary artist, so I'm, I'm an actress, I'm a, uh, a vocalist, I'm a poet, um, I'm a painter, and um, I think that is it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And as far as black identity goes, um, what does black identity, what is it for and to you? Uh, what is it to me? I'll, um, what is it for and to me? You know, um, it's 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 layered. You know, because uh, black identity is, I mean, that's it's who I am. But but it means different things to me. I'm from the country, and so I'm from East Texas and deep deep in East Texas. My family is, and so um, my black identity and roots in East Texas means something different to me. Um, well, they're not the same as uh, my identity here uh, in the city. You know, I'm still grounded in my East Texas roots, but it, there's something about um, when I go home, you know, being able to, uh, to smell the earth and um, to hear sounds that I don't hear here. You know, you can hear insects. You can hear, um, actually hear trucks passing by and um, and it's not just like a cacophony of just sound, and all of that means something uh, dear to me. Um, being able to walk outside barefoot, you know, it's something different. Not worry about stepping in things, <laughs> but um, you know, and, and red clay, dirt, just everything that represents the earth is what I connect to in my black identity, and in from in East Texas, um, having growing up there and being very, very green coming into the city, um, my black identity in the city is, um, <sighs> hmm, it has been learning um, what black identity means for me and how I'm received, how my black identity is received in different spaces. So, and that's one thing that I didn't really, I never was concerned about before because where I was from, my family's from an all black town and, um, and uh, that's something different. Um, but being in the city, um, it just, it's like, oh, how do, I, how do I navigate a space that may not be um, as welcoming as, as, as what I've experienced in the past, so. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. So it sounds like your black identity back home is really, you know, grounded and rooted in uh -huh. who you are. There's yeah. no learning. It's just, yeah. it just is. And it sounds yeah. like you feel connected. And when you're home, all your senses seem yeah. to be a lot louder. Yeah. So when you came to a larger city, it was almost like learning parts of your black identity. Yeah. And yeah. leaving the parts that were already. Well, I wouldn't say I just left them, but it was just learning. Um, learning a new part of about who right. I am and and, and becoming um, add, add, I would like to say add on mm -hmm. to my black identity um, I also consider my black identity um, you know I consider my mom to be really um, a huge part of my black identity and I say that she was uh, she is uh, very spiritual and I remember um, hearing her just sing around the house and um, just about anything. And, and looking back, I know that some of those songs were uh, maybe songs of woe, sometimes songs of happiness, but it was all blackness. And um, as, as an adult, you know, I, I look back sometimes and I can connect to those things, to connect to those days where I could just see her around the house or hear her around the house uh, singing and it informs it, it informs me in a way that says okay yeah you can do this thing or mm -hmm. you can do that thing and because she is so strong and she was she is I keep saying was but she is so black 
And um, so I don't, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yeah, no, so it's just, you're basically just reassuring yeah. your black identity. Yeah. Like you're always connected, no matter always how far connected. you're from yeah. home. Yeah, I really feel like I am home in my blackness. Mm -hmm. um, when I was when I um, spoke about coming to the city, that's when I was much younger and learning things. Mm -hmm. But I really feel that everywhere I go, I'm at home in my blackness. Love so, that. so as far as um, your black identity in creative spaces, have you felt like you've had room to be ex expressive as you desire? And mm -hmm. if not, what is something that you would want to possibly? How would you want that to change, or mm -hmm. what do you think is needed for that to change? Yeah, sure. Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. You know, um, along this uh, creative uh, timeline I've been on, um, different things, different um, avenues have allowed for more expression than others. So um, in, in poetry and being a, a spoken word artist, I had so much freedom there. You know, it was largely um, that that space was largely occupied by African American women and men, and so there was a freedom just to just be, you know, no mm -hmm. rules or anything like that. Um, no, no one, you know, there, there were no boundaries, you know, and mm -hmm. and the medium that we were using for our art and our creativity, which is poetry, that in and of itself lended itself to freedom and expression. Um, as a performing artist in acting. Um, early on especially, um, I didn't feel um, that there were, um, that other people in some instances were open to my blackness or that my, my black identity had to look a certain way mm -hmm. that made them comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in some spaces, you know, for instance, maybe auditions or, or or actually being a part of a show, hearing that you need to be more black or you need to be more urban. And, and, um, and that's the thing that I, I, I had a conversation with a friend just the other day that's still happening. And you know, even in this day and time, it's like whatever, um, that, whatever your blackness is, is not fully accepted, you know? And, um, that's 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 a problem. That's a problem. You know, it really yeah. is. You know, because um, blackness shows its face in so many different ways. There is there is no one way to be black, mm -hmm. right? E even our hues are. <laughs> exactly. You know. Exactly. You know, it, it just there's a whole spectrum of our of of what we can look like, and so there's a whole also a whole spectrum of what we can, how we can express ourselves and our, the rhythm of our walk and the rhythm of our speech and um, how we color our speech. Whether we, you know, I, I can go down home and bust up a few verbs, mm -hmm. you know, but I also know how to speak very articulately and, and, and be in a space like that. And all of that is who I am. And I don't think that I should have to compromise one for the other whenever I feel like it. And I have decided not to do that, so. I love that. Yeah. Um, it's it's like you said. It's a spectrum. It's a diaspora. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have yeah. different dialects, even yeah. in our country, yeah. even in our town. Yeah. Depending on what neighborhood you're from, right. or, you know. So, and I love that you you know brought up the fact that you know down home mm -hmm. that dialect comes out, mm -hmm. but when you need to be articulate, especially in certain art forms, mm -hmm. diction is important. Yeah. Not erasing it. No, 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 but no. But if certain if certain art pieces yeah. or roles or characters call for something else, you have the range. It doesn't have to just be right. that girl no, or that lady. Right, right, right. And I think that we we have to own the um, we have to own take ownership of what we how we present ourselves. You know, take ownership and t uh, take the ownership of choice mm -hmm. to present ourselves in the light that best represents us in every room. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think it's, you know, I, I, I said articulate, but I think that also there's a, um, mm -hmm. it's important to, to, for me to say that just because I'm busting up a few verbs or somebody else's doesn't mean that they don't have a PhD in life, you know, or, you know, or that they aren't, extremely intelligent and I think that's that sometimes is a misconception just because 
our vernacular may be different in some spaces, you know, and that's, that's, a, that's a sad mistake for anybody to make to identify us according to how we speak. Yeah. I think it's just ideal to just let the blackness be. Yeah. It's gonna be what it is. Yeah. It's gonna be brilliant and right. infinite. Right. So you yeah. get what you get. Right. right. Um, and we show, I think it's important for us to show up every day as our authentic right. selves, no matter if we're in professional space, no matter if we're at home. Yeah. You know, it's Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Who is a black historic figure who has inspired you artistically? Mm. It's hard, I know, if, to narrow it down to just one, but... It is really, really hard. <laughs> um, for me, um, it's, it's really Nikki Giovanni. When I think about um, who I gravitate toward mm -hmm. and uh, who I have gravitated toward in my art life, or just as a person, you know, just growing up as a, as a kid, I was like, oh, I always wanted to read her work. I always wanted to um, know more what was behind this poem, mm -hmm. what was behind um, what she said here. And she had so much courage, mm -hmm. um, has so much courage to say the things that she says and just be unapologetically black, you know? And that is one of the things that, um, stood out to me and con really connected and drew me to her mm -hmm. because I hadn't, when I discovered Nikki Giovanni, I think I may have been in middle school and um, I hadn't seen that outside of my mom, you know, I hadn't seen that in any other um, place and I just discovered her from going to the library, picking up a book, mm -hmm. you know, so um, she, I, I, would, I would say her, yeah. yeah. As far as like the influence, is there anything about her writing that speaks to you to make you, you know, want to pursue uh, like a, a certain area of your art? Right, right. Well, I think what I got most from her is just to be, to stand, mm -hmm. right? And stand tall and firm in who I am as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, as a black woman mm -hmm. and as a creative. You know, I, I learned through some of her work that some of the things about who I am were maybe not so, you know, like, th there, there are things I learned that, um, there, there's one poem, she, I can't think of it right now, but she just talked about the, the um, with such specificity, the, the isms of this one person. Just knowing that it is okay to be who I am. Mm -hmm. And because growing up, I was in, in a small town, you know, I was pretty much odd, odd girl out, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I was very expressive, really, really shy, but still very expressive. And so there were times where I thought, well, mm, you know, is, is this weird, is this not, you know? Mm -hmm. And discovering her and her work um, gave me permission to live in who I was. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like the poem that you're mentioning, whoever she was speaking of, they weren't so one dimensional. Right. And they're probably very liberating right. to read, right. you know, that it's like, oh, it can have many sides going right. back to the identity. Right. I kind of want to get into your painting, your visual mm -hmm. art. When did you get into that? Oh, okay. So um, I started sketching when I was young. Um, hmm. Probably, I don't know, the, the earliest I can remember is maybe about seven, mm -hmm. eight. Um, and I used to draw, fa I would draw fashion designs. I thought I was gonna be a fashion designer, right? And so that's all I would do all day long, just draw fashion. And, um, and as I grew older, I would, I would just sketch, doodle, whatever. But as far as my painting is concerned, probably um, 2003, maybe 2004. And, um, I used to paint on different things, doors, uh, chairs, um, just wood pieces that I would find, uh, clothing, um, plates, light switch plates. I would just paint everything. And I, um, and, and umbrellas, I used to paint umbrellas too. And I would just sell them. I would set up little booths and sell them. And uh, yeah, that started about in two, 2003, 04. And I stopped for a while. I, I put it aside, 
and um, dove into theater more, um, which theater has always been a part of my life. Um, but I put it aside and I picked it back up probably in 2018. And uh, yeah, so I've been focusing more on that. Do you feel like one or the other allows you to use one part of your voice in a different way? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm painting this, yeah. just you know exactly what I'm trying to get across. Like is yeah. there a difference between like the theater or like visual? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There is a difference. I think it's a, um, it, it um, feeds me in a different way and it's, a diff it's, a, it's an outlet in a different way. You know, like when I want to paint, I have to paint and it's not the same kind of urge that I have. Um, when I, I feel like I want to be on stage, I have to be on stage or I need to write. It's something completely different. So, um, and the way that I paint, I'm very free form. And so it feels, it feels much like dancing to me mm -hmm. in a way. And so, um, not as scripted, not as scripted. Yeah. I don't, I don't really give myself too many rules when mm -hmm. I paint and, um, it keeps it free and, 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 um, fun for me. I love that. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of wrap up with this mm -hmm. question. Um, what kind of advice would you give to your younger self? And this can yeah. also be advice for people yeah. who want to pursue visual art, performing yeah. arts, all the art forms, yeah. but in particular with Little Stormy, yeah. East Texas, <laughs> read her Nikki Ooh. Giovanni. What, what would you say? And even if it's not career related, what would you say to Little Stormy? Um, I would say um, don't apologize for anything. That all of it is part of the process. All of it is part of the journey. Make no apologies because everything is part of the gumbo that's going to make you just so delicious, you know. Just don't make any apologies. Every mistake is great. Every triumph is great. And it's all good. You know, um, own who you are. Walk into every room with your shoulders back, your chest out, and your chin high. You know, and uh, go for what you want unapologetically. That's what I would say. Mm, I love that. Now I'm just thinking of everybody. Their, everybody is their own pot of gumbo. Yeah. You can smell it from the yeah, other room, so you just have to get ready. Yeah, you got to get Either ready. You want the old yeah, or you don't. Or you I'm don't. Not over, so there you go. But it's still all good. It's still good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stormy. It was so great speaking with you. Thank you, um, Tori. We'd love to have you back anytime. Thank you so I'll much for back. joining us. This has been Black Arts Matter with Dallas Summer Musicals. I'm Jory Jackson, and we'll see you next time.